Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, April 6, 2012, and I'm Darko. I have a website. It's ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channel is ddarko2012, and my newest uh, backup channel is ddarko2013. All the headlines and links will be in, posted in YouTube's video description, so go down there and check them out. Uh, plenty, uh, basically all of them that are covered will be in there in the order. So I go through a brief overview of all the headlines that I see um, in the news, mainstream new news and uh, alternative news. So I'll just give you a kind of a quick background in case you're new. All right, I'm going to cover um, basically the Middle East, uh, Africa news in this first segment. And we'll be moving on to uh, surveillance and that in the next ones, hopefully eugenics in the third video. So. Okay, so Syria, um, you're seeing right now uh, going, what's going on right now with um, Hillary Clinton uh, basically um, threatening a security deadline and stuff like that. So I'll go through that first. Would intervention end civilian deaths in Syria? So this title was actually in the Yahoo AP little news ticker. And when I saw that, I knew that it was related to the other propaganda that they're putting out with this. So uh, the answer is no. Them, uh, basically, the international community intervening uh, into uh, Syria's um, issues, their problems, whatever, their situation, will not end civilian deaths. And I'll get to that. Syria warned by Hillary Clinton, i.e. threatened to implement Kofi Annan's peace plan. So U.S. signals it is losing patience with Damascus at a meeting in Istanbul. This is from April 1st. 2012, we move on. Syria accepts April 10 peace plan deadline, says Anon. This is April 2nd, so they accepted it. Syria did for a deadline on April 10th. Then we move on. UN Security Council endorses deadline for Syria, so the global governing body um, approves of it. So that kind of makes sense, right? Because it's coming out of them, it's coming out from them uh, with an Anon who's apparently um, a representative of the uh, Arabs, so I don't know how that works, but either way, it says here, Russia rejects a deadline for a non-serious peace plan. This is from April 2nd, so Russia is not on board with this. In fact, um, their foreign minister, Russia's, says friends of Syria undermine peace process, says Lavrov. So he goes on here and it says, everybody backed Kofi Annan's peace plan, he noted. Then all of a sudden, another meeting of the Friends of Syria group makes decisions urging the Syrian opposition to refuse negotiations and arm, pro, uh, promising new sanctions against Syria. That's right. The West did recently approve um, arming the rebels um, publicly. Um, you know, in the alternative media, it was kind of known that these uh, rebels uh, were being armed by the West already uh, prior to this public announcement. So. And maybe remember this from my last uh, news reports. The Gulf states of Saudi Arabia and Qatar have expressed readiness to pay salaries to the armed uh, opposition members. Remember I titled that uh, the West is going to pay the rebel terrorists a living wage, making them look more like army of mercenaries than opposition activists. So Russia warns West uh, Arabs against arming Syria rebels. So they went on and they warned them against arming uh, opponents of Syrian President al-Assad saying it would lead to years of bloodshed without helping the rebels to defeat government forces. So uh, I guess the goal here is to kind of create instability and whatnot so they can get uh, regime change, the West that is. So here we come uh, full circle to what I was talking about uh, just four minutes ago. Syria says terrorist acts on the rise despite an on plan. So that is the purpose, is to um, create instability. So we go back to this uh, first article I was talking about, would intervention end civilian deaths in Syria? Well, no, because uh, the whole point is to create chaos so that, they can, so that the global governing body can come in there and uh, do what they want. But they're not going to get the regime change as far as it looks like right now. So that's why they're doing what they're doing, which is escalating the, uh, the terrorist attacks. So let's go in here and we'll check that out. Syria says terrorist attacks committed by armed groups have increased over the past few days despite reaching an understanding on a peace plan proposed by the UN Arab League envoy Kofi Annan. It says here a non six point peace plan which has been accepted by the Syrian government calls on groups to stop violence. So to kind of wrap this uh, part up before we move on, the, the you know, most people when they see this, I'm not talking about people that know what's going on, that are aware of what's going on. Uh, they just read, you know, the Associated Press and writers, and that's truth, and that's God, right? The mainstream media to them. But basically, April 11th is going to come, and there's still going to be shooting. There's still going to be, quote, violence. And why is that? Well, because the West is funding 
um, arming and funding uh, these terrorists to go around and create havoc in the country, and they're going to blame this on the government for cracking down on it. So the Syrian ambassador to the United Nations has said that Damascus is committed to the peace plan proposed, as we just said here. First, he was asked by Press TV how far is the Syrian government willing to cooperate with Anon and making the political solution work. Do you think that they will see no armed presence in all the Syrian cities and therefore will stop any, uh, for example, excuse for a civil war to continue? And he goes on, he basically says um, that first of all, yes, Syrian government will cooperate as far as possible in Anon's mission, and we are very, very uh, interested in making this mission successful indeed because that is our interest to stop the fighting inside Syria. But he goes on, he says the real enemies of Syria and the Syrian army are not those armed groups, talking about the rebel terrorists being funded by the West, but the enemy is Israel, very simply. But what I will uh, say here is, would you please allow me to have some comments about what is said in Beirut about Syria? Nobody is convinced that the United Nations and Britain and France and Israel are friends to the Syrian population. They are the enemies of the Syrian population and the enemies of the Arab and Islamic world. So pretty heavy word. But when you leave the Western uh, uh, media, you'll find that that's kind of the sentiment in some places. So it's here, Hirsch, Seymour Hirsch, U.S. facilitates M.E.K. terror in Iran. So American Pulitzer Prize winning investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch is reporting and the New Yorker is saying that the Bush administration provided the MEK operatives training at secret facilities in Nevada starting in 2005. We did train them here and uh, washed them through the Energy Department because the DOE owns all of this land in southern Nevada. A former senior American intelligence official told me we were deploying them over long distances in the desert and mountains and building their capacity in communications. The Iranian dissident agents received the full panoply of spook training offering by U.S. Uh, Special Forces operatives. They got the standard training, it said, in uh, communications, uh, cryptography, small unit tactics, and weaponry that went on for six months. And uh, most of the viewers know this, but uh, the MEK has been designated a foreign terrorist organization by the State Department in 1997. Yet there's actually um, people out there saying that, you know, these are... These are people that need to be funded, just like the rebels in there, and just like in Libya with the rebels there. So, uh, report says Israel may delay Iran attack. So, this is kind of big news. This is from March 8th, though. Israel agreed to hold off a strike on Iran's nuclear site, uh, sites this year in exchange for receiving U.S. military equipment, diplomatic sources say. It says, quoting unnamed Western diplomatic intelligence sources, that the United States has agreed to supply Israel with bunker-busting bombs and refueling planes if Netanyahu agrees to delay a military strike on Iran this year. So Russia, Iran, set to counter U.S.-Israeli strike against Iran, U.S.-led naval drill. So um, same Foreign Minister Lavrov from Russia issued a strong warning against the military attack on Iran Monday, April 2nd, saying that a preemptive strike would violate international law. You can go in there and check it out. As I said, links will be posted. Confrontation with Iran may be delayed to 2013. Defense officials says sanctions beginning to show results. Israel waiting to see what happens in upcoming nuclear talks. So a possible military confrontation with Iran may be postponed until 2013, senior defense officials said in recent weeks. So, And it says here that uh, amid growing signs that the West economic crackdown on Iran is bearing fruit. So I don't know if that's actually true, but Scoop says Israeli-Iran attacks to coincide with next Israeli election, so that could be another reason. It says here that the senior uh, politician told my confidential Israeli source, Natyanu has decided to delay an Israeli attack on Iran until some weeks or possibly months before the next scheduled Israeli election. That will happen by October 2013, unless Bibi determines he wants to go uh, to the nation earlier. So then we have uh, U.S. aircraft carriers departing Persian Gulf. The latest strat for naval update map suggests that reports speculating a potential Israeli attack on Iran have been delayed until next year are accurate with the U.S. having postponed numerous aircraft carriers and other warships in the Persian Gulf. And it now appears at least some of them are departing. So it says here... So this is kind of in relation to the previous articles about the uh, attack on Iran being kind of held off so they can uh, train more. But uh, remember this, the Iron Dome system success in intercepting 80% of the rockets fired from Gaza this month. So talking about the Iron Dome system. So then we 
I came across this article, April 5th, 2012, rocket fired from Egypt hits Israeli city. And I'm wondering, I'm like, well, what about the whole Iron Dome system? 80%, right? So, uh, like I said before, I think that they just let these things happen so that they can crack down or for whatever purposes. You know, there's always alternative motives for allowing yourself to be attacked or your people to be attacked. A grad rocket has landed in the southern Israeli city, but has caused no damage or injuries. So, and of course, when they, uh, when they, when, when, uh, you know, there's something coming from Gaza, what, they shoot it down, and then what happens? And about, like, five or ten Gaza civilians uh, get killed, right, by an airstrike, by an Israeli airstrike. So, But it goes on, and it says that uh, the Iron Dome, the newly beloved missile defense system that nobody wanted, said how a misfit defense minister pushed through a project that defied the IDF's offensive spirit and that proved crucial in the latest Gaza-Israeli hostility, he says, but the truth of the matter is that for years the Israeli Defense Forces, despite its name, had no interest at all in investing in defensive measures, neither the fortification of towns nor the acquisition or development of anti-rocket defense systems. Moving on here, we have the White House ignores Congress, sends all $1.5 billion in aid to uh, Egypt in one transfer. So in an unusual move, the White House acknowledged that the administration or regime relayed all $1.5 billion in U.S. civilian and military aid to Egypt for this year. Remember, um, in Egypt, they were rejecting the U.S. aid. Uh, the people were, it says here, officials from Egypt's Brotherhood at White House. So White House officials held talks with representatives of the Muslim Brotherhood in the White House, or in Washington this week, as the Islamic group threw uh, itself into the fray in Egypt's uh, presidential election. So that's something that's going to be backed by the West, just like in Libya, where they're having uh, possibly Sharia law on that. So they want to radicalize uh, these Muslim countries so Britain malls buying Israeli drones. Britain says it will buy the largest and most sophisticated unmanned aerial vehicles, drones made by the Israeli regime, according to news reports. Next up, U.S. pressing Interpol to deny Egypt's request to arrest NGO workers. Remember this, the Obama regime is petitioning Interpol to deny Egypt's request for the arrest of American and other non-governmental workers, NGOs accused of illegally and operating democracy programs and stirring unrest and a push to prevent further escalation of the planned prosecution that sparked the worst crisis in the U.S.-Egypt relations in three decades. Moving on here, the Russia military has an action plan involving Georgia if Iran is attacked. Russian Defense Ministry sources told the semi-official news agency Interfax that action plans are being finalized to react to an armed conflict involving Iran and its nuclear program. The general staff of the Russian Armed Forces, quote, calculates that the military action against Iran will commence, quote, in the summer of 2012. Since Israel does not have sufficient assets to defeat Iranian defenses, the Russian military considers U.S. military involvement inevitable. So something I came across uh, last week and then again th uh, this time is that Russia is going to be holding exercises uh, that's going to coincide with the elections uh, in October. The possible threat of a new Russian invasion is connected to the paramilitary elections scheduled for next October and possible disturbances that may accompany them. So it says that the Russian uh, spearhead may be ordered to strike south to prevent the presumed deployment of U.S. bases in uh, Transcaucus Asia to link up with troops in Armenia, basically the West trying to expand into Central Asia and that um, and Azira and Turkmen. And it says here that uh, by one swift military strike, Russia may ensure control of all of the Caucasus and the Caspian states that were its former realm. Of course, this is over natural gas and oil. And finishing up, small victorious uh, wars would unite the Russian nation behind the Kremlin, allowing it to crush remnants of the pro-democracy movement. It's really a company, a business like in Egypt we were just covering. So Obama blames high gas prices on Iran. This is from uh, March 23rd. Remember that? So Obama blames Iran for gas prices. Obama is blaming Israel now for rising fuel prices on April 3rd. Then moving on, uh, in search of big uh, oil backing Romney blames Obama for high gas prices. So now Romney blames Obama for high gas prices, but move on activist blames the 1% for rising gas prices and food. So you try to figure that one out. PSYOP team prepares for expanded mission in Africa. So now they're expanding into Africa for the resources and whatnot. It says more than 20 soldiers of the 345th Psychological Operations Company started pre-deployment training on March 26 for Africa. Our team is triple the size of the PSYOP team we are placing, and their mission will expand and morph. Next up, Uganda, oil, U.S. Africa command, a tool to recolonize the African continent. Then Mali, where they had the CIA-backed coup, West intervention in Libya, tipped Mali into chaos. 
AU, African Union Somali forces, and first deployment outside uh, Mogadishu, and Israelis arming South Sudan with missiles as U.S. seeks to disintegrate Yemen for its oil resources. Marines arrive in Australia to secure natural gas and oil fields.